good day everyone so today we will be learning about fa film factors that is sensitometry and characteristic curve so coming to the specific learning objective at the end of this session you will be able to define what is characteristic curve you learn the production of the characteristic curve know the features of it and learn the types of sensitometry so here are the contents what we will be discussing today so we have spectral sensitivity sensitometry, photographic density, opacity and transmission, production and features of the characteristic curve, variation in the characteristic curve with development, comparison of the emulsion by the characteristic curve, application and information obtained from it. So starting with the spectral sensitivity, as we know in our electromagnetic radiation, we have a wide range of visible spectrum. So if you see over here, the red light has a wavelength of 700 nanometer and the blue light has, uh, the sorry, the violet light has a 400 nanometer. So these lights are being absorbed by the emulsion layer. So here if you see our film is made up of supercoat, emulsion layer, substratum layer, base layer, anti-curl and anti-halation layer. So in this layer, the emulsion layer is the one which will be absorbing the different lights based on the wavelength. wavelength. So this behavior of the emulsion is known as spectral response. So to, to get this property, we add some color sensitizers so that it will control our spectral response. Coming to sensitometry, so it is a device which is used to measure the response of the photographic emulsions to the radiation. So this will help us to know how much a photosensitive material is being exposed to the different levels of exposure. So this was discovered by Hutter and Riffield. So before moving on to the characteristic curve, we need to know few terminologies. So starting with the transmission. In general, transmission means that something is passing through something. So over here, this image what you can see over there, this black bar is our film. So an incident light is falling on the film and the light which is being passed out is your transmitted light. So coming to the transparency, it is the measure of the intensity of light which is being transmitted through the film. So we have something called as fractional transmission which is a ratio of the transmitted light to that of your incident light. Coming to opacity, opacity is just opposite of your transmission ratio. So it is the incident light to that of the transmission light. So basically opacity will tell us about the blackening, the degree of blackening in the film. Okay. So this opacity, the values are in wide range. So we convert these wide range values into logarithmic values. So when we convert it into logarithmic values, this is known as your photographic density or optical density. So your optical density is log 10 to the base opacity. So your opacity is incident light to that of your transmitted light. So when you see over here a typical radiograph, the op optical density values vary. So on the transparent part of the image, the optical density is 0.2, at the blackest part it is 3.5 to 4 and in the mid grey tones it ranges close to 1, not exactly 1. Okay. So coming to characteristic curve. It is a graph which illustrates the way in which a film or a film screen system responds to the different level of exposure. So this is a graph which is being plotted between your optical density versus your log relative exposure. This curve is also known as your H and D curve or D log E curve. Production of characteristic curve. So there are three basic steps which is being involved. So first one we have is exposing and processing the film. Second we have is measuring the densities produced and third is plotting the curve. So we'll see one by one each of them. So first we have is exposing and processing the film. So this diagram what you see over here is of a step wedge filter. So when we expose this, so this when you see the height of each step is varying. So the relationship between one exposure and the next is known as your wedged factor. So how do you expose the film? So we can expose the film in two ways. 
so we have first one we have is time scale sensitometry and the second one we have is intensity scale sensitometry so in case of time scale sensitometry the time where time of exposure will be varied and your uh, kvp and mas will be constant whereas in case of your intensity scale sensitometry you will vary your exposure factor and you will expose the film at a equal interval of time coming to your measuring the densities so the densities which are being produced will be measured using a densitometer which is a device which helps us in measuring the densities the final step is of plotting the curve so this plotting of the curve is done so here we have on y axis we have density and on x axis we have log relative exposure so when you see this curve has three parts we have a region to the left of the toe a region between the toe and the shoulder and a region towards the right of the shoulder so when you see the region of the left of the toe it gives us features that is base density fog and threshold the region between your toe and shoulder tells you about contrast gradient film latitude exposure latitude speed and sensitivity whereas the region towards the right of the shoulder will tell you about maximum density and the reversal in the film so we'll discuss each of them in detail so coming to the region to the left of the toe this is the area which is under exposed so even if you are exposing the film your film will not respond to any of the radiation so the density in this region arises because of two sources so we have the first one is base density so this occurs due to the absorption of the light as it is transmitted through the polyester film base and the next factor we have is fog so this arises when there is a development of the silver halide grains which have received no intentional exposure so this can be caused due to age well storage fog chemical fog and safe light fog coming to threshold so as we increase the exposure our film starts responding so the moment our film starts responding the density also begins to rise above the gross fog so this part of the curve is known as your threshold so next we have is the region between the toe and the shoulder so this is often the straight line part of the characteristic curve which will give us the changes which will give us the data about the changes in the density so there are two major consequences of this that is your contrast and latitude so when you see contrast we have exposure variations which constitute subject contrast and it generates the differences in the image densities so this we can measure using a slope or a gradient so the gradient at a point on the curve is the slope of the tangent to the curve at the point when you see it in the image we have considered a straight line part and we have made a angle of a slope a so mathematically we represent it as g is equal to tan a where tan a is your trigonometric tangent of a you can see it over here in this image so coming to average gradient so average gradient we calculate by drawing a two straight line between your x and y and we determine the tangent of the angle so it is basically dy the density at a y minus the density at point x to that of your log ey at point y and minus log ex that is your log relative exposure so this is how you calculate your gradient coming to latitude so latitude refers to the way how a film or a film screen system is able to record a successfully wide range of exposure so this will tell us about how tolerance is my film screen system to the extreme conditions of the exposure so here we have two parts one is your film latitude and the other one is your exposure latitude so coming to the film latitude it is basically the difference between your upper and the lower limits of the log relative exposure which will be producing the densities within the useful range that is 0.25 to 2 above the gross level so here if you see in the diagram we have considered two points so the difference of the log relative exposure at a point y minus the dif uh, log relative exposure at point x will give us our film latitude
coming to exposure latitude so this will tell us the tolerance of a film or a film screen system to the errors which we are selecting in the exposure factors so exposure latitude is your film latitude minus the log exposure range coming to speed and sensitivity so speed of a film is determined by the amount of exposure which is required to produce an image so speed is direct inversely proportional to your mas so here if you see we have two systems system a and b so system a and b over here is our is our film so we considered film a and film b so speed of a system a is inversely proportional to the mas of system b and same way even the system b is inversely proportional to the mas of system b so this is how we get a ratio in terms of exposure factors that the speed of a system a to that of speed of a system b is equal to mas of system b to that of mas for system a and this will help us in calculating the speed of both the systems that is a as well as b so a high speed system requires less exposure to produce a specific density than a lower system so this is what uh, we are trying to show over here in both the images when you see in the first figure my a is starting from the zero so means it has a high speed when you compare it with the b diagram you see the system b is starting first so the both uh, the film is responding differently coming to the region of the right of the shoulder so this is often referred to as the region of overexposed so here we have two factors that is maximum density and reversal so coming to maximum density as we expose the film to greater and greater exposure there is a point reached where all the silver halide grains in the film are reduced to silver during the development so when if even if we are exposing and there is no result no change so there is that point is known as your maximum density coming to reversal reversal is just opposite of your maximum density that is when a film emulsion may exhibit a rather strange phenomena when subjected to exposure many times greater than that required to achieve d max so even if we are exposing it there is no change in the density that is your reversal coming to the application so we can use characteristic curve to compare the different type of film comparison of film screen system monitoring of the film processing and calibration of the step wedges so the information what we are getting from the characteristic curve we already discussed all these things that is the fog level threshold contrast speed and sensitivity film latitude maximum density and reversal characteristics so to summarize what is characteristic curve that is a graph which will illustrate the way a film or a film screen system responds to different level of exposure which will help us in comparing the different type of films and monitoring of the film processing this is the reference thank you Thank <laughs> you.